Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Laborn, the Nats Vocal Wellness Coordinator. So let's face it, coffee tastes good, and as singers, sometimes you need a little bit of caffeine in your life to make the world go round. So this um, edition of the Vocal Wellness blog actually started with an article that was sent to me regarding how um, some new evidence suggests that coffee is not actually dehydrating um, in people who drink a moderate amount of coffee. This particular study, which I'll go ahead and post for you, led me to the idea of let's talk about caffeine. If it's not bad for you, then how much can you drink? And then this led down to this huge wormhole of how do you determine how much caffeine is in a given amount of coffee? And finding out that different kinds of beans contain different kinds of caffeine and the way that you grind them because of the surface area. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of time to explore with you guys how caffeine impacts you and how much caffeine can you have before potentially it starts to dehydrate you. The article in question that came into my um, inbox actually is called No Evidence of Dehydration with Moderate Daily Coffee Intake, a Counterbalanced Crossover Study in a Free Living Population. So I'm gonna link that article for you. But basically these researchers took a look at uh, 58 men and unfortunately we can't always assume that women will have the same impact as men from a caffeine standpoint but what we know is in these 58 men they actually did blood and urine analysis uh, to see if a certain amount of coffee would actually dehydrate them and they compared that to the effects of them drinking water and what was really exciting from my standpoint, so I know that we can continue to drink caffeine, is that in moderation, in people who already drink coffee, um, this particular instance showed that there was no significant difference between drinking coffee and drinking water from a body mass and water density standpoint, which is great. So let's talk a little bit about how much caffeine is in certain beverages or chocolate or things like that. So I will include for you a list on today's uh, video cast that you can link to. And I'm pulling this from other resources, so these are not my own uh, findings. These, And I wanna certainly credit the authors of the people who did the work on this. So we're gonna find that certain types of coffee, for example, Dunkin' Donuts coffee is going to have a different amount of caffeine than Starbucks coffee is going to have a different amount of caffeine than McDonald's coffee. And so you have to really get an understanding of how much caffeine is in the size beverage that you're drinking too. Are you drinking a small? Are you drinking a medium? Are you drinking a large? And then we move into the beverages that are specifically caffeine beverages, like the monster drinks or the energy drinks that create a significant amount of caffeine. Medications, some things like Excedrin um, and some of the other medicines for headaches have some degree of caffeine in them because it can decrease the headache because of the way that it acts on the blood vessels um, when you ingest caffeine. One of the other things to think about, and I will send a link because again, this is not my work, but there's a whole website devoted to coffee chemistry. So if you are really interested in the chemical compounds of coffee, I would encourage you to take a look at it because it was super informative to me. And when, you know, certainly coffee connoisseurs are going to have their very specific methodology. And if they wanna know exactly how much caffeine they're getting in a French press versus a drip coffee, um, you can take a look at some of these formulas and figure out exactly how much caffeine you are probably likely to get based off of the type of coffee and the beans that you use and the type of grind that you use. So I'll link you to that coffeechemistry.com site as well. 
One of the interesting things that I found is that caffeine is not just linked to the coffee plant, that there are over 60 plants that actually contain caffeine. One of the other things that I learned is that caffeine is extracted differently from roasted and unroasted coffee beans. So you want to think about whether you're getting roasted coffee beans or unroasted coffee beans. The other two main types of coffee beans there are, are Arabica and Robusta. They're grown in different parts of the world and they also have different amounts of caffeine inherent to the bean itself. The Robusta bean actually has more caffeine in it than the Arabica bean. One of the other interesting findings that I was not aware of is that dark roast beans and light roast beans actually have a different weight. So you need more of the light roast beans uh, to weigh the same amount uh, than you do the dark roast beans. Dark roast beans are heavier than the light roast beans. And so if you're looking at measuring amounts of coffee for the same uh, weights, you're gonna need more light roast than dark roast for the same to achieve the same weight. We also know that by drinking coffee, the chemicals in the brain of dopamine and glutamate, which make you feel better, are increased after you ingest caffeine, which is why it is the most prevalent drug used in this country. I hope you've enjoyed today's talk very briefly on caffeine. I do think that the findings of not dehydrating you as a singer can be really interesting and that it's okay to have that cup of coffee in the morning if it helps get you moving, just don't overindulge. Have a great day.